Okay, so here we are at the square frame, the little hut, uh, just six kilometers from Scott Base. I'm actually stuck out here at the moment because we had a Con 1 come in this morning. I'm just gonna quickly go through and summarize my entire year in one video. But when I got on the plane, I was actually just really, uh, quite emotional really, because I was leaving New Zealand and I actually, you know, genuinely miss it. I just felt like tearing up because I, I just saw New Zealand leave and I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna see this for a whole year. So it was quite sad, but also exciting to, to come down here. So we got down here, so he picked us up in the Hagland and it was actually quite funny because we're all yapping away in the Hagland back to Scott Base. And Nigel got back and he, he said like, oh my God, my mouth's actually sore, like my jaw was sore from talking because I haven't talked this much in so long. And I, and I couldn't believe that he said that. I was like, but it took about a month or so to actually properly get into it. Meeting the new team, hanging out with them. Me and Al and Reese are just ticking the kitchen over, getting all the gear in. Like, there's just so much food we have to bring from outside, from other areas. Every meal, so 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock meals. It's a lot of work and it keeps you busy. So, I mean, played a lot of Halo as well. So we had a, we ended up doing a Halo night every Thursday, I think. Basically, we just went in the, the big briefing room and they got a projector screen, Xbox, four player split screen, Halo Reach. Oh my God, it's just amazing. And we had these mad, mad game types, you know, it was just really good time. Like, it was like the best day of the week. Everyone was in on it, they fucking loved it. All you're really doing during this time is, is partying on the weekends, gymming during the week, and then waiting for flights to come in and out. But there's always something happening. I'd say between what? September and December, kind of having just a bit of a, bit of a, because everyone's new, everyone's having just a whale of a time. So it's pretty fun. Jacinda Ardern came down, so before Jacinda came down, uh, Prime Minister, or ex-Prime Minister of New Zealand, she sent down like two like security blokes who came down and were like, checking us out, making sure we're not like murderers and stuff. <laughs> so, so they came down, they were really nice guys. I was talking to Natalie Robinson, she runs the show down there. And I was like, look, I'd love to come out and camp and stay with you guys for a night. So she said, yes, she said, that's fine, absolutely fine. Come out whenever you want. So Saturday night, I think it was, I walked out there, towed my bloody sledge and my, my pack and stayed at the camp. And this was probably one of the best experiences I had down here. They got a big hole going through the sea ice. They're dropping robots down there. You know, it's incredible. They're looking at like the platelet ice, which is the platelet ice that forms below the actual sea ice. And it's kind of where all the, where all the magic happens, I think. They had a kitchen, they had food, they had everything, and they could see the whole of Ross Island. So we went out a little bit further to the, where they lay the perspex on the sea ice. And the perspex is different colors. And then they measure it over time to see how it reacts to the stuff, to the microplankton underneath. So basically they got this hole out there and then we dropped this rov down. So a remote operated vehicle into the water and um, Ian actually let me have a little go on it. So we're, we're driving this around under the sea ice. It was incredible, like one of the best weekends I've had here. So we just got to see so much more than we, I ever thought I would, especially under the sea. Cause that is just like the most, there's just so much life down there. It's incredible. You look on land and there's seals and stuff and birds in summer, but in winter you look outside, there's nothing. I went out to Cape Crozier thousands of penguins, tens of thousands of penguins, right? So we flew out there in the morning, got out there to pack the camp down, and then once all the work was done, we got to explore a little bit. So I was walking around, not into the colonies, but we were around a little emperor penguin colony, and there's the babies, and there's like skewers eating the babe, the dead ones, and like, it's, it's pretty, it looks rough, but it's incredible to see them in the wild, you know? And there's like all the Adelie penguins on the hill, just like literally dots and dots and it looks like just tens of thousands of people. They all come through the same thing and they're just walking past you. Like bang, 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 bang. Just like one after the other, like pretty much the whole day. There was, wasn't a single break in the bloody line. It was, it was phenomenal. I've never seen that much wildlife in one place. Like I said in the previous video, I just could not believe it. I couldn't believe my eyes, honestly. And it was just incredible to think that they're all there, you know, the whole winter. The emperor penguins, anyway. The Adelie penguins, I think they move. So, incredibly hearty creatures. And when I was walking back to the camp, one of them actually followed me. It came right up to me. It was like closer than, you know, way closer than 10 meters. But that's okay if they come to you. And certainly when you're approaching them. So I was just, I just laid on the ground. And he came right up to me, walked right up to my head and looked down and was like, just so curious, you know? Like, I honestly couldn't believe it. Like, probably just the luckiest moment ever, ever. Yeah, then we got back to Scott Base and me and Al got the truck stuck <laughs> trying to get food. But the funny story is we actually, 
We took the truck out during lunchtime, so lunch is out, everyone's in the having lunch. Me and Al drive out to the iHut, load the fucking truck up with food, and then drive off and we just the beached we beached the Land Cruiser. And so we're out there digging away. Hoping no one's seen us, you know, like fuck and it took us all lunch to get it out, like forty minutes, and like by the time we get back everyone's like just finishing the lunch and like, oh where you guys been? And we're like nowhere, mate. We we're actually building like an igloo. We got it. We got it. Not too bad, but it was kind of janky. Like it, the roof wasn't quite right because we put a flat roof on it, so it kind of slowly sank down. So that was good though, because once we got it up and we got the roof on, and there was like a tunnel that went into it, which was epic. So you crawl through the tunnel and then you come out into this igloo. We just went out there and had had a few. It was good, and it's a nice place to chill out. In between all the work you do, you have to have some sort of outlet and then we got to Christmas dinner so Christmas dinner me and Alan Reese smashing out so much food like you wouldn't believe honestly you can just look at a photo here it's just everywhere and during this whole time as well the ski field was open so we could go skiing or snowboarding there's just a little rope tie out there and in between that as well you can also go hiking on the Castle Rock Loop or skiing whatever you want to do make a fat bike and then well, there's a few tracks on over here as well, uphill and all that. And I've got here on the, on a video, on a, a photo, Tom, me, is banned from defrosting food, defrosting shit, making pasta, the kitchen, voodoo, which is alcohol, strong IPAs, and the film 300, so there's a bit of an obsession there. We got eye stock, so me and Al and Reese we cooked some chili. It's like a chili eating competition at eye stock. So we had this big pot of chili over there. So that was actually the first time we got to join McMurdo's for a party in about, what, three or four months we were there? So that was really nice just to catch up with everyone and, and have a good time. Live bands, live music. And so January did the marathon, which I was really happy with. I actually got the fastest person at Scott Base. Uh, I still went camping. I slept outside, I think, mid-Feb, and we just dug a hole in the ground, put a little roof over it, and that was just a beautiful night. You know, the sun just goes around like that. Basically, the little canopy was just to keep the sun off my, my face so I could actually sleep. We come into April, the sun starts going down, which is still pretty cool. And then we got, actually did get another camp in here, so I think it was March I got a camp in. Uh, it was a lot colder, it was minus 25. But with the project on, there was a lot of rebuilding. There was people ripping down walls, building toilets, building accommodation. We're all kind of getting uh, acquainted with each, with each other and the Americans are coming over a lot more. And there's a photo here of the, door, the square frame door open, which is hilarious. So, Fuck, it was cold in here some days in winter. So basically, winter was just a combination of like, stargazing, coming out here, uh, trying to get that Sigma working properly to stay warm, and basically just cooking and cooking and cooking. And then we had the midwinter dinner. So the midwinter dinner was pretty big for me. That was a lot, you know, more work again, running the bloody midwinter dinner. And we had 45 Americans come over. Uh, so that was a relatively big night. So we cooked a lot of food, had a big party, and that party as well, I ended up going over, over the road and I was ill-equipped so I didn't really have much stuff on me. And I ended up coming home late in the morning and basically I ran home in my shorts and hoodie. And then I got like up to a power store which is a building with the, the electricians use, it's like a flywheel but it's heated. So I just went in there, the Scott Base building, and I rang because you can ring from there from, from to Scott Base. So I rang up Scott Base and I was like, look, please can you guys pick me up? You know, I haven't got, you know, it's nice and warm in here, but I've got no way to get any further. So basically, they were like, yeah, sweet, we'll come pick you up. And then, and then the next day I got in massive, I got in a lot of trouble for that. But yeah, lessons learned, I mean, we all make mistakes, right? The Titan went down, so the Titan was actually really big news. I don't know, obviously worldwide, but for me, I was obsessed with it. Like, I was looking at that thing, like every minute, I was like, fuck, have they found it yet? For six days, but that was just the media bullshitting, but I mean, Essentially after that it kind of got really interesting. So we were discussing in the bar building this Underwater vessel which could house a camera so as you can see from the Titan thing this sort of idea came about Okay, we can we can make this happen. So We basically built this rig which can house a camera and we were like, okay How deep do we want it to go? And I was like, we want it to go 300 meters 300 meters. We'll make it 300 and we're like there was so much troubleshooting and we're like you know, how are we gonna get the window? How are we gonna make the steel thick enough? Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, just like, I've got all the answers. He's got everything. You have the centimeter thick perspex, centimeter thick steel, and we just, he made this fucking amazing thing. And af after this, we started putting the camera underneath the gantry. So we were doing, I was getting some shots of the ocean and the sea life down there with the camera. 
So I just, I just all of a sudden got obsessed with, you know, underwater life. But before that, Andrew came down, and he is a scientist, and he does sea ice stuff. And basically, we told him, I told him about all the stuff I've been doing, and he was so on board with it. It's like he got the paperwork sorted out, everything was sorted to get this probe down, this camera. And basically, we took it down to Turtle Rock, drilled the jiffy hole with the big, um, you know, big, big uh, engine thing, put the camera down, had a look up. We were looking up and looking down. We could see all the ocean floor. Uh, the depth was about 46 meters, and we got the camera facing up. And basically, on the camera facing up, a seal just swam up. And tried to look at the jiffy hole. So we got some really good footage from the past, I don't know, three or four months. I've, and I've got even got seals, like two, two or three months ago, I've got seals on the camera, like underwater. And they don't even come to the surface. Like you don't see them on the surface at all. Not, not that we could see. But yeah, that basically summarizes the whole year to this point. Basically it was a mad summer six months and then another eight months of winter or six months of winter slash spring slash autumn. Um, doing this project so everything's worked out really well and if you do come here really you will enjoy it you'll fucking love it if you do whole 30 months you know it's gonna be a long slog but I, I can't recommend it to anyone I reckon it's amazing it really is and there's a lot of ups and downs as there is in life uh, but just be ready to work if you if you apply for the chef role uh, or the domestics or whatever it doesn't really matter which role, which role but you will be fucking working 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 this is a great place and I have thoroughly enjoyed this whole year here. You know, I've only got two weeks left. Tell me your thoughts on it. What do you reckon? Do you think you would come down here? Would you want to do a whole year? Would you want to do a summer, a winter? And the change of the seasons is incredible because it's like you got the 24 hour sun and then you got 24 hour dark. And then when you're 24 hour darkness, you're just waiting for that sun to come up. And like, you can see it licking the sky, you know? And it's incredible. And then all of a sudden, it's 12 hour days again. Like it doesn't seem, it's only been a month since it was 24 hour daylight and now it's, now we got like 13, 14 hours of daylight a day. Thank you for watching this one, and if there's anything else you want to know about Scott Base, uh, please hit me up. So that's really a wrap up for me, and we will see you back in New Zealand.